Hey guys, welcome to Wrestling Days and welcome to this initial review of this week's SmackDown. So it feels like what WrestleVotes said before the show started turned out to be true. They said this was not going to be like a mind-blowing show, but there would be a lot of things that would happen that needed to happen to really push things forwards. It was an entertaining show. Um, I was not bored at any point. There was lots of things that went down. Nothing anywhere near what happened on Raw, though. Uh, but yeah, still a worthy watch. Still a show that I enjoyed watching. And to be honest, this is the show we need it allowed some of those other uh, matches and builds to just get the room to breathe. They've been so overshadowed by The Rock and Cody and Roman and Seth and all of that stuff that there was definitely matches here that needed room to breathe and they got it. So let's start, shall we, with our first match. This was Randy Orton, Kevin Owens against Pretty Deadly. I can tell you that the community gave this a 94% score. Good, right? It was a good match. And uh, lots of action in this match. But it ends when Logan knocks out Kevin Owens. Randy, Kevin Owens was then pinned. Logan went under the ring. Randy berated Kevin because he didn't know what had happened. Then he saw the replay on the screen and he was a bit more apologetic. So Randy goes under the ring, right, to try and get Logan. Logan was there. I didn't think he would be, but he was there. Uh, pretty dead. Deadly then attack. Kevin Owens and Randy overcome pretty deadly, but this allowed Logan to escape. We chase Logan, right? And we go to the entrance stage. Look, Kevin and uh, Randy chasing Logan. He ends up running to the back and seemingly stealing a car, right? There was some dudes, random dudes standing by this lovely car. Don't know what it was. It was red. I know that much. You know, one of them red ones. It was one of them. And um, he got the people out of the way. He jumped in the car and he was gone. So he managed to get away. Still feels like Randy and Kevin are on the same page as we go and head towards WrestleMania. There was a moment where I thought we had planted the seed for them to kind of drift apart and split up. It does seem and feel like Logan is in for quite the battering at WrestleMania, but I still think he comes out with the belt. I still think he finds a way. Jake could come down. KSI could come down. Uh, his co-host from the podcast could come. There's plenty of people that Logan could turn to to uh, help him in this match. So I think that going into it, it's not going to look good, but I think he will find a way of retaining. We are only eight days away from WrestleMania. Seven, I'd imagine, by the time many of you uh, watch this. Right, after that, uh, they announced that we've got the WrestleMania kickoff event. That is going to be next Friday. Apparently, that's going to stream on Peacock. So it looks like an actual event that we can tune in for. So I'm very excited about that. Very excited. And they also announced that the kickoff show for both nights of WrestleMania, they're going to be two hours long. Then we had EO. She said that uh, she was being interviewed backstage earlier today, I believe. She said that she felt sorry for Bailey. Uh, she said that um, EO and Dakota made Bailey relevant. They grew tired of Bailey. They outgrew Bailey. They, I love this line, saw her as a friend and they will regret that for the rest of their lives. <laughs> I love that line. It really made me laugh during the watch along. So I really enjoyed that. Bailey then attacks. And uh, I think this is kind of what we're seeing in this bit here. So Bailey uh, then attacks. And uh, that's all we get from that. Right. Then we go to our next bit. Look at this. Look at this. This laser that was shooting down. And you can see the smoke in the background. I'm not blown away by Jade's theme song. I don't think the theme song is all that great to be honest but this presentation looks fantastic so nick aldis introduces jade cargill and uh jade said she's a once in a lifetime superstar she said the storm has arrived so we didn't really get much more than that but uh there she is in the ring 
And you can see WWE themselves saying the storm has arrived. So she would actually change her outfit because, of course, we would see Jade later in the show. Not the strongest promo from her here. Um, her delivery was okay. I didn't think it was exceptional. Um, she spoke and she... I could imagine bit her being nervous. I could imagine that they kept the lines quite short. There really was not much that she said. Um, she is a long, long way from, like, going back and forth and spitting bars and, like, really tearing someone apart on the microphone. At least that's how it felt. But, you know, not too much we can take away from this because she didn't say a great deal. Uh, damage control we're asking who's jade backstage what she done just stood in the ring like yeah impressive she went uh and and dakota then went on to talk about if you want to see impressive see what i'm gonna do to bianca tonight that of course would be our main event um right nick oldis bumped into alba and isla backstage and isla dorm was coming out with all these ideas alba was like forcing isla away uh apparently there's a follow-up tweet which i haven't had a chance to see yet from isla we'll look at that in unseen unseen of course is our daily video now where we take a look at what's happening on social media the digital exclusive interviews uh fan theories like fun stuff we just it goes for like an hour it's just absolutely rammed so we'll have a look at that in there but uh he bumped into aj aj said uh did you make sure that la won't be here nicole just said as i said yesterday i asked him to not attend and aj said you should have told him to not attend i did like the fact that later aj knew that la night was still going to be there I also love the fact he thought it might be the cameraman in the ring. I love that because as a fan, I was watching going, it'll be the cameraman. I think I even said it in the live stream and then it wasn't. Uh, so I love the fact that the wrestlers are not falling for some of these same traps that we see again and again and again, you know? So, yeah, I really enjoyed that. Uh, then backstage we saw Bobby. He was encouraging the Street Profits to uh, go on, you know, win the match, go to WrestleMania. They, of course, were taking on Austin Theory, Grayson Waller. Winners would be added to that six-pack challenge. This took us to our second match, and we were quite a distance into... The show at this point, in all fairness. So this was a win for Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. Uh, the community scored it 91% good. So not as good as the first match. Corey Graves at one point gets knocked down. It's hilarious. So there's this one bit where Corey Graves gets knocked down because I think it was Angelo Dawkins that knocked Grayson Waller into the commentary table. Grayson goes flying into Corey Graves. Corey Graves goes flying down like he proper gets knocked over as we go to commercial break. Um, but basically backstage, we see Carrion and Scarlett attacking Bobby and B-Fab. Um, and so that distracts the profits interestingly dawkins heads to the back to help montez does not montez stays and tries to continue the match he ends up losing the match now i don't know that they're going to make anything of that but i definitely thought it was significant it felt significant to me because both saw what happened one decided to go to the back one decided to continue they didn't both just run to the back and they didn't both just stay and try to win the match. They both did different things. So I don't know if anything will come of that. Dawkins went back to the ring, by which point Montez had already been rolled, rolled up and defeated. Uh, and then, of course, the AOP attack, Authors of Pain attack. We get uh, Bobby coming down, but he gets overwhelmed. And basically the final testament, a standing over Bobby and the Street Profits, uh, and Carrion said, no one goes to WrestleMania now. You failed them, Bobby, and you failed yourself. So those were the words of Carrion in the ring, standing over Bobby, standing over the Street Profits. We are expecting that match to be added to WrestleMania, but uh, no announcement on the show at the moment, or this week. There was nothing here for that this week. 
Right, then we got Lagarda del Fantasma. They came out uh, and Santa said, I hate to say I told you so, uh, but, you know, we've now sent Ray pack him. He said, oh, this was a lie. And he said, I might not have got the infection and the amputation that I wanted. Don't know where that came from. But I outsmarted Ray and it only took one call. And at that point, Dirty Dom came out. So Dirty Dom came into the ring. Santa said, look, we haven't always seen eye to eye, but you were right. Uh, loud boos, louder boos than before as Dom went to talk. Uh, the crowd were really all over him. I'm sure they turned it up and sweetened it as well. But then this, Ray and the LWO and people commenting about what Zelina was wearing. Uh, pretty wild outfit from her. Um, they arrive, they get into the ringlet, and then the two teams are face to face. And basically, um, Ray said, you know, the two people I despise the most in front of me right now, his son, Dominic, and Santos Escobar. He challenges them to a tag match. He says, Dominic, Santos against me, Ray, and a partner of my choosing at WrestleMania. Uh, it's accepted. Crowd are chanting for Carlito, but Ray announces it's going to be the newest member of the LWO and out comes Dragon Lee. Uh, then it seems like the two teams are going to back away from each other, but Zelina and Electra have words. Zelina slaps Electra and then all hell breaks loose and we get a massive brawl. Um, LWO end up standing tall, but uh, yeah, I felt a bit for Carlito here. I kind of felt a bit sorry for him because uh, the crowd wanted to see him involved. He had a little smile on his face, but he is just very much playing a supporting role. They clearly want to push Dragon Lee as the future. Uh, this should be a good match. Dominic and Santos against Ray and Dragon Lee at WrestleMania. So that match was made. Backstage, we got uh, Naomi telling Bianca that I've got your back tonight. So obviously, Bianca's taking on Dakota in our main event. Naomi tells her, I've got your back. Now, after this massive brawl, right, that happens between these two teams with LWO standing tall, uh, we then get a match between the New Catch Republic and Legado del Fantasma. So Angel and Umberto, or Berto, had to now wrestle, right? Winners would be added to that WrestleMania card. And it was a win for New Catch Republic. Wade Barrett was saying, this isn't fair. They just got beat up. Um, but they had to compete next. Match was 96% good. That was what the community scored it, 96 percent good um and yeah i mean i thought the match was pretty fun in places i enjoyed it uh but it was a win for new catch republic so we now know the teams that have been added from smackdown it's new catch republic and austin theory grayson waller those two teams will go to wrestlemania and be added in that six-pack challenge right then we went backstage judgment day were not aware of dominic right and what he was doing dominic arrived and he said i'm sorry i just wanted to make you proud finn said is there anything else you want to tell us and dominic said yeah i need to see a doctor right um damien said wrestlemania is far too important for us as individuals and as a group and as was mentioned in our live stream that seemed to tease something big for him um so i think a cash in definitely feels like it's on the way i mean it would be mental if he didn't even try a cash in at wrestlemania that would be crazy i can't even imagine that so i fully expect him to at least try a cash in uh and Rhea then looked at damien and said is there anything else you want to tell me there's a lot of paranoia in judgment day at the moment which uh, definitely came across then we had paul Heyman. he said and i love this the final boss took cody out from orders of the tribal chief i thought they would go the other way and that roman wouldn't know that rock was going to do what he did instead they've gone completely the other direction and they've made out that it was actually roman that uh gave the orders 
I like that because a lot of criticism coming out of Mundy was it was amazing, but doesn't this build up Rock Cody rather than Roman Cody? Well, actually, now we find out that Rock is doing Roman's dirty work. Rock is the one that's beating Cody down on the orders of Roman Reigns. So I really like that. Um, and then basically we heard from Jimmy. He said that Solo has been given orders as well. And on SmackDown next week, Jey Uso will take on Solo Sokoa. All of this on the orders of your tribal chief, Roman Reigns. Grayson Waller says, A-Town down under WrestleMania. They're on their way. Pretty Deadly just beat Kevin Owens. Pretty Deadly just beat Randy Orton, says uh, Kit Wilson. He obviously very excited. Pretty Deadly were able to get the win over those two. Thanks, of course, to Logan Paul, as we mentioned earlier. Right, then we had AJ Styles in the ring. Uh, AJ said uh, to the crowd, you're the reason that he came to my house, right? Going off at the fans. He said, I'm going to expose him as the under-talented piece of trash that he is. Uh, and he said, I know you're here, LA Knight. Come out. Are you going to come down the entranceway? And then he said, are you the cameraman in the ring? Which I loved. And he took the hat off the cameraman and it wasn't. And he went, no, you're better looking than LA Knight. <laughs> no, you're better looking. You're not LA Knight. You're better looking. But LA Knight was ringside. He was disguised as like a security guard, ringside technician. You know, he had the cap on. He had the WWE shirt on. So these two brawl and uh, basically uh, AJ runs off. Uh, LA Knight jumps on the commentary table and he says at WrestleMania, you'll know whose game this is. Right. Then we had a little Tiffany Stratton uh, segment. So Tiffany Stratton uh, said she is carrying the burden of perfection. And she said, I'm going to spare your eyes from all the uggos, which made me think of Tyler Breeze. But uh, fun little video package for her. Then we had a good little look at the arena uh, around this arena. It's got like a casino uh, and everything. So that looked absolutely awesome. And we also heard that the Andre the Battle, Giant Battle Royal will be on the show next Friday. So we're getting that. And we found out that WWE Speed is going to be next Wednesday on X 12 Eastern. So we got the details for all of that as well. Then we got to our main event match. There wasn't long left. We got Dakota Kai against Bianca Belair. Bianca won. 94% goods. So none of the matches really get into that great level. She won with a KOD. During this match, we found out the five most played women on 2K24. Number five was Trish. Number four was Asuka. Number three was Becky. Number two was Bianca. Number one, Rhea Ripley. So I thought that was interesting. First time I'd seen that stat. Uh, Kabuki Warriors came down to make the save. Too late. Uh, Dakota lost. Um, then we got Naomi coming down. She couldn't help. Of course, that brings out Jade Cargill. Jade Cargill comes down, wrecks them all uh, on her own, uh, like bends back. She kind of pins Kyrie, bends over, like licking her own hand. And um, she just looked like a megastar, right? She looked amazing. And basically, it ends with Naomi, Jade, Bianca standing tall, standing together with all of them in the shot and the WrestleMania logo in the background. That match, that six woman tag match, not confirmed yet, but very much expected to be uh, added to WrestleMania. So you can see lots of talking points there, right? Lots of stuff. I mean, the two hours just absolutely flew by. And as I said, this, I think, was the show that we needed. I think we needed to let these other feuds, matches, breathe. And of course, we know already we've got Rock, Roman, Seth, Cody, Drew, CM Punk, apparently, all on Raw on Monday. Do not miss Raw on Monday. Do not miss it. It is going to be absolutely unmissable. So, um, yeah, how does Cody respond to what happened last week? So, yeah, Jade arrives and she wrecks house. Got another couple of posts here. This is uh, Nick Aldis making it official. Oh, well, there we go. 
There we go. Should we play this? Let's give it a go. Several emotions. Here we go. Let's see. Uh, irritation at the uh, the behavior of damage control. Awestruck at the physical prowess of Jade Cargill. Uh, I would say that the number one feeling I have, though, is inspiration. You see, uh, after seeing that, I'm inspired to make a match for WrestleMania. Oh. At WrestleMania, I've decided we're going to have a six-woman tag team match. Here we go. Dakota Kai and the Kabuki Warriors will take on Naomi, Bianca Belair, and Jade Cargill. There it is. So that wasn't announced on the show. That actually should be an unseen. Uh, it might also make unseen. Uh, but there he is announcing that six-woman tag match literally 12 minutes ago on WWE's uh, X account. So, yeah, I mean, look, we can have a little look at the match scores. I've actually jotted them down into the thing as the show was going on. So you can see that New Catch Republic against Legada del Fantasma was the top match. We got a couple that came in at 94% uh, that was in there. And, yeah, you know, this was... This was not bad. This was all right, but we didn't really get any of those matches that really reached that upper echelon. So I think because the match quality wasn't a little stronger, and dare I say, because there was no real OMG, oh my God moment, like what we saw, uh, I would struggle to get into the eights. But I thought this was solid. I thought it was entertaining. Uh, I would happily take this kind of a show every week. So I'm going to say this is like a 725. I'm feeling around that kind of a mark. So that's my thoughts on this. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Really appreciate the support as always. And uh, obviously we'll do another of these reviews straight after Raw. We'll have one done straight after both nights of WrestleMania as well. So uh, if you are enjoying the content, make sure you hit that subscribe and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.